there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another beautiful day here on the Stony Ridge Farm. And I've got a problem, a huge problem. So today we have Skywalker roofing here and we're gonna be doing a new roof on the mobile home. Uh, today we're gonna teach you guys the lessons that I learned by putting the wrong roofing material on my house. And I think it's a very valuable lesson for all you guys to learn. Right now the guys are stripping the old roof off and they're throwing it all into here. We got two layers of shingles on a 1990 uh, mobile home. Not a good thing. So come along today as we teach you guys about picking the right roofing material for your job. And we're gonna talk to the industry experts about roofing so this would be great information if you're considering re-roofing your house all right i ain't afraid of work i ain't afraid of play i ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way i ain't afraid of life times like this if you mess with my freedom i'll tell you just what you can kiss so guys, I'm with Luke from Skywalker Roofing, and this is my home. Luke is a good friend of mine. Thanks so much. Good. Luke's giving me a good deal What's on up, get, getting the shingles up here on the roof. Uh, you're one of the largest roofers around. I mean, one of the best roofers around too. Widely regarded as one of the best roofers around. That's why we chose him. Tell me about this shingle. Let's rip one up. All right, check it out. So. The first thing that you told me about was they, they weren't sealed down. Yep. Uh, so the, the, this is the adhesive that holds the shingle together. Today, uh, you'll see later when we see the shingles that are going down, most of the adhesive today is put on the back of the shingle. You can see here it's actually on the top of this shingle, and it, the weight of the shingle is what holds this down, and it, later on, you know, the sun it hears it and uh, it can no longer come up. But. I mean, there's nothing holding these shingles up. Right. It's sealing down at all. So the, the nails are the only thing holding it on. Uh, and this adhesive is so important. I mean, it's everything. Yep. Uh, the shingles we're putting on today are 130 mile an hour wind resistant. Yeah. Uh, I'd be surprised if these are 60 mile an hour wind resistant like this. Yeah. But. So the scoop is, I had a huge windstorm come through. As you guys can see out here, it's wide open. So we had a big windstorm come through, 60, 70 mile an hour winds. I looked up here on the roof and these are a cut rate shingle. This is just not a good shingle, not a good product. Uh, this is a mobile home on my farm and I'd planned on living here for about four years. Well, I'm into the eight year mark now and I feel like this mobile home will probably be a staple. It'll be here on the farm forever. So I'm gonna go ahead and put vinyl siding on it, new roof on it, and that way it's buttoned up nice and tight. The problem was I bought a cut rate shingle. It cost about a third less. And as you can see, uh, it's just brittle as it can be. So during that windstorm, I came up here and those shingles were just doing this, flapping in the wind up here. So half the shingles blew off the roof right here and every shingle on this side just flaps like that. Don't buy cheap shingles. Now, we're gonna go to Luke's place and we'll take a quick look at some different roofing materials uh, that we had to choose from to put on this house. And Luke will go through all the details of what you need to know about those roofing materials. So Josh, uh, this here is just a mobile home roof vent and it's allowing the heat to escape out of the attic. Um, the way this was done, you know, it's two layers of shingles and it, this is real common. A lot of people put the second layer of shingles on and when they do, they don't take the time to tear it around this and reflash it properly. So they just put the shingles on and caulk around it. Well, anywhere water can come in, like this keyway here or inside these vent holes, it's coming in and then it's gonna channel around and it's gonna run right under every shingle here. Once it gets under this layer of shingles, it's another layer under here, but there's nail holes. There's all kinds of ways for it to penetrate back into the house. So absolutely not the right way to do it. So underneath here, just so you know, I have a little bit of a water problem, a humidity problem in this uh, section of the house. Could that be why I'm having a humidity problem? It could be a little water coming in from this vent. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's water clearly penetrating in right there. Yeah, it has to. Water yeah. has to come in here. Um, yeah, these vents are, are known for problems anyway. This isn't the type of vent I would put in. Yeah. Uh, we're going to eliminate these and put a ridge vent. Nice. Uh, put wood back in the holes. and. Uh, so there'll be a vented ridge cap right here? Yes. Uh, so we will end up cutting out about two and a half to three inches all the way down the center of the ridge here, about an inch and a half per side. And it'll allow heat to escape up and out and out of the bottom of the vent. It'll be a shingle over style vent. It's real important that you have soffit vents as well. 
we want air to be able to come in and go out. What I've got on a mobile home versus a regular home, there is no soffit. In other words, there's no overhang right here. So inside the home itself are vents in the ceiling that actually draw air up through the house, drier air up through the house and help to keep this cycle going. Your house has to breathe. Am That's I right? right. If it doesn't right. breathe, what will happen is humidity will get in here and uh, it'll cause it to drip, I guess. What is it? Condensation. It'll mm -hmm. condensate right on the roof right here. So. Yeah. It's amazing how much condensation people get due, due to lack of ventilation. Yep. Uh, Doing it right. Yes, sir. All right, guys. Luke is a great friend of mine. Luke Skywalker. Skywalker roofing, is this something that you just decided? How'd you come up with that, first of all? Uh, well, when I was younger, people called me Skywalker because okay. my name was Luke, of course, and yeah. it was a little goofy, but uh, it stuck, so well, it worked. You don't look like Luke Skywalker, so I don't, do you have a, do you have a <laughs> around here? No? Actually, I do. Do you? Yeah, I yeah, <laughs> have to look at a different video for that one. Though. Stay tuned to the end of the video. We'll get some true Luke Skywalker uh, footage right here. So guys, I'm here with Luke from Skywalker Roofing. Uh, no pun intended. We are here to educate you guys. I've been trying to get with Luke for about, what, three years now to do this video. I've been wanting to do this video. We talked about putting a roof on my house. We talked about standing seam versus uh, regular old architectural shingles. I say regular old ar architectural shingles, but we've got something really new. It's something really nice. And first of all, Luke wanted to tell you guys why he's doing this video and why he does roofing. Uh, you have a, a really large roofing company here. How many employees? Uh, we're pushing about 50 employees right 50 now. 50 employees. How yeah. many crews is that? Uh, well, we have about five crews out working every day, and, and uh, that doesn't include the repair department and and others, but yeah. Gotcha. And you've yeah. been in the roofing industry since you were able to walk? Pretty much, yeah. yeah your dad uh, had a roofing company, is that yes, right? Yes, he did. Okay. So I learned everything from my dad and uh, started this business in 2003. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. We're going to walk you guys through what you need to expect. And whether you live here in North Carolina or Southwest Virginia, and whether you can use Skywalker Roofing or not, we want you guys to know the right thing for your roof so that you don't experience the troubles that I experienced just now with that gar garbage roof that I put on the mobile home. So Luke, I'm gonna leave you to it and okay. you're gonna show us everything we need to know. First thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna explain the differences in the way uh, Josh's roof was and the way we're gonna do it now because uh, everybody does it different. Um, so first of all, Josh had a little piece of drip edge on his, on his roof that was existing. Uh, this would be the drip edge and it goes on the bottom edge like this. Uh, it's an inch and a half wide uh, by about an inch and a quarter down. Um, it serves a purpose and it will hold the water out. Um, okay. It's designed to go down in the gutter. Um, this is what we use and we prefer a lot more. This is called the F8 drip edge. And uh, just look at the difference in the two. Yeah, so, so you've got a lot more tracing up here mm -hmm. and tell me what you got. What else am I seeing? Uh, yeah, so of course, so this, any kind of water, ice, snow, anything backs up, it won't penetrate through here. Uh, a lot of roofs don't have even this to come down this far and you wouldn't even have anywhere to fasten this to. So uh, this is really the way to go. This will go across the eaves, all the way across the bottom, down into the gutter, and it'll go up the rake edges all the way around as well, just like this. So it'll go around the full perimeter of the home. Gotcha. So this is called the rake edge. This is called? The eave. The eave. So after this, we're going to go and we're going to use an ice and water shield. Um, this is made by Owens Corning. Uh, so what it does is it has a plastic on the back and it actually peels off and it's got a sticky back on it, so adhesive on it, and it sticks down to the wood and creates a seal in all this area to go three foot up the roof, two foot past the interior wall. So it's all the way up here on, on my roof right. right now. It's all the way up here. Okay. It'll be a three foot wide strip. And what happens is when this goes down, it prevents any kind of snow, ice, or anything from coming back up under here. And if water ever does get under your shingles, every nail that penetrates through here, it actually seals around and creates a seal. Okay. So anytime water gets under the roof, it still won't penetrate through this. So this is a barrier just to keep water out in all the worst areas on your roof. The eaves, around your chimney, up the walls, 
uh, around pipes. We're gonna put it anywhere where there'll be any kind of problems later. Now does this, uh, the backing on this, it gets sticky? That's right. Yeah, okay. this has been out here for a while and okay. it's, it's, it's a little dry. But once you peel um, that off, it's kind of sticky, tacky, and then when it gets right. hot, it oh. really melts down there to it. You don't want to have to pull this off on a 100 degree day and not do it twice uh, <laughs> okay. because it, it will, it'll make you angry. Gotcha. So when it sticks down, you're not getting it back up. Gotcha. Yep, it's a one-time deal. After that, um, we use a synthetic underlayment now. Uh, this is made by Owens Corning called Pro Armor. Um, it's designed to resist the water, of course, and, and repel. But at the same time, it allows air and, and moisture to be able to come out, so it vents at the same time. And that is a, that's a, it's almost like a fabric -y material with a plastic back on it. It's a woven fiberglass material, that's right. Okay. Uh, so it's super strong. Um, you can see how strong, you, you can't tear it. It also has a slip resistance, so it, on a steep roof, it keeps you from being able to slip and slide. Gotcha. You so, were showing me the tar paper over there, the differences yeah. in the tar paper. This is the alternative, and so that'd be so standard I'm going to just tar grab paper. this. Uh, okay. Just so people can see the quality of what, what I'm getting on my roof. This, just uh, pull that. Yeah. That's it. Now, pull this. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't going to pull not, it. Not going to happen. So this, the whole this, roof is covered. Uh, with this over top. Okay, so right. as we start at the bottom, we work our way upwards. So when water hits, it falls off of this onto this and falls off of this onto that and then this onto the gutter, right? That's exactly right. Yep. The only thing difference is uh, the drip edge on the rakes. They require us to put it over top of the underlayment. That way, if water ever comes in, it comes onto the underlayment and it comes down. That way. Yep. Okay, cool. Very few people even do that right. Uh, it's a, they had to bring it to our attention from the manufacturer years ago. They were like, hey, guys, that goes on top of it. And we're like, okay. But years ago, we did it like that as well. Gotcha. Until they corrected us. Very so, cool. Yep. We do it the way they recommend. That way, we keep the warranty. After all these products go down, uh, we'll start the shingle installation process. Um, this is Owens Corning Duration Shingles. Uh, I'm a big fan of this. We've been using it forever. Uh, I've got a, a house down at the coast now, and I, it's uh, 2009. I put this shingle on it. We have, we've, we've got at least four storms since then. While everybody else's roof is blowing off, yep. yours is staying on? <laughs> Not, it, nothing happens. That's awesome. Uh, the strip is the beauty of this, uh, this woven fiberglass strip that, that's in it. And what it does is it gives us a perfect nailing strip to be able to know where to nail, as well as when you shoot it with a nail gun, it won't blow through the strip. And also the adhesive on the back is so aggressive, that's where you get your wind warranty from. It's a very aggressive adhesive. And when it goes down, it goes down right here into this fabric strip. It's like yeah. It was like that. So what we saw on my shingles was this wasn't, this was non-existent on my shingles. I bought, I bought a second cut rate shingle. This was non-existent. It just had a little bit of goo right here, a little bit of tar right here versus that ceiling directly to that. So I'm getting 10 times the roof that I used to have. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, you, uh, it was, uh, I think you said you got them like at a discount warehouse or something. I did. And, um, you know, if that's what you can afford, I, that's what, you know you need to do but at the end of the day uh save your money and and buy some quality stuff uh how long ago did you put those on josh two years ago two years ago yeah two years ago uh and i regretted it from day one so, so as soon as i started nailing up the first shingle i knew just like you were talking about blowing through uh we did an overlay which is probably not the right way to do it but that's the that's the west virginia way uh <laughs> so it's a mobile home and i didn't expect to be living in it much longer than five or six years here we are going on eight years uh, so I thought, well, you know, when I get done, I'll just sell the mobile home. I'll only get about 10 grand for it. So why invest more money? So I got $2,000 in the shingles that you guys are pulling off right now. Oh yeah. yeah, that stings. And, uh, unfortunately we see that every day. Yeah. Every single day we go out and we talk to customers and they're in the same situation you're in. You know, they, they went out, they got some estimates, they went with the cheapest bid and they yeah. end up with something they regretted later. Uh, it almost never works out going with the cheapest bid. Cut corners on your roof and experience problems. Later on, yeah, it, well, it costs a lot more to fix fascia boards and water damage inside the house, sheetrock damage, mold. Mold's a big thing. So, yeah, later okay, on, man. yeah, it costs a lot more to fix the bad problem from saving a few bucks doing the wrong thing. So. That's exactly right. So we would put the shingles down, and once we're done with the shingles, um, at the ridge, there'll be a ridge vent, 
Yep. Uh, so up here at the very top, uh, excuse the other pieces, yeah. but this that will go on there. This yep. is a ridge Just vent? like that, yep. yep. Uh, and it, it will allow air to flow out, and it'll come up through here and come out, and there'll be a ridge cap over top of it that will go over it as well. So Just it'll like be that. covered yep. up with shingles and you won't know what's there other than the thin black outline of it. Gotcha. Well, y'all, so what that does is allows air to move from the eave under here all the way up. That's a ventilated eave all the way up through and back out of the roof vent right here. So you've got constant airflow. Heat is rising and pulling out of your attic space or of your uh, um, eave space right here. We also, I asked Luke about this. Um, yours, the, what's going on in the house here is a little bit different. You're using a different product that helps keep stink bugs and, and yes. smaller critters out of there? This is pretty much a standard um, piece of ventilation here. What we use has a mesh built into it here. Gotcha. And what that does, it, it doesn't allow any kind of debris, any kind of bugs or anything down into your attic, but still allows the air to flow out. Gotcha. Uh, just one more thing to just a little bit more money. Why not do it? It yeah. makes no sense not to, to me, um, but this is another option. Yeah, so you're talking about saving, uh, doing the roof of a house, pennies, yeah. pennies on the dollar yeah. for doing the right thing and getting the kind with the mesh net. So it keeps spiders, bugs, roaches, anything yeah. and everything out of the roof. You know, all this stuff does add up to, to a little bit substantially more money, but it's the only way I would go on my own home. That's the way I would do it if I was doing my my mother's home, my grandmother's home, you know, whoever it is. That's that's the way I would do it. Nice. Same thing with the drip edge. I mean, we're talking about pennies difference between this and this. Yeah. And when you see it, which would you prefer? What's this product called? Drip edge. Um, what is this uh, particular one called? This is drip edge. This is yeah. This is they call it an F8. This is an F5. F8. So yeah. ask for F8. Even if you can't use yeah. Luke, ask for F8. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it's better. And it's possible they won't even carry it. Most people don't carry it because they want to go with the cheapest product. Right. Every, every roofer just, just chooses to use what's standard and what everybody else is used. We choose to use what we think is best for your home, regardless of what the industry uses. Gotcha. Now over here, we also have, so you do standing seam uh, roofs also. We talked about putting standing seam on the mobile home. The money really wasn't, it was kind of a waste to put that standing seam, but tell me about standing seam. For the folks that are looking at doing a metal roof, uh, standing seam versus just a regular corrugated uh, with exposed fastener. So this has no exposed fastener. That's right. Um, so this is this is the Cadillac of all roofs, of course. This is standing seam metal roof. Uh, it has no exposed fasteners anywhere. As you see here, you see the piece of trim on the edges, the rake trim. Everything's held in by Z-bar back here. Uh, I, sh I did a video a long time ago about Z-bar and how all this trim locks in. Uh, you guys can look at that later. You can also look at how we put it down with clips and it locks in. I showed the locking mechanisms and how all that works. Um, but this is just way more superior than any other kind of metal roof or shingle roof. It's a 24 gauge metal. It's made with a Kynar 500 paint. Um, it's just designed to last a lifetime. Gotcha. And it, you won't have to do it again. Now we're talking about the architectural shingles that we used on my place. What kind of lifespan can I expect out of those shingles? Now the shingles, uh, they carry a great warranty as well. I mean, it, it, that's a, a, a limited lifetime shingles. Okay, uh, We really? could talk for hours of what, <laughs> what a limited lifetime shingle uh, means, of course. Gotcha. Uh, but limited lifetime, as we all know, probably is not truly a lifetime. Right. Uh, but we, we can expect 40, 50 years out of that shingle. I would hope so. Yeah, yeah. that's an Owens Corning that's product? That's a duration. That's of right. Duration. Mm -hmm. Or Owens Corning duration. duration. That's yep. what you want to ask for because that's, yes. that's the cream of the crop. That's what we prefer. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Well, before we go, guys, I will post a link to Luke's channel. Check it out. I, I, he's got awesome videos. There'll be a link to one of his awesome videos with the standing seam and um, whatever he wants me to put up there for sure because he's a good friend of mine. And let's really talk about your nonprofit and what you do with the nonprofit. Uh, yeah, so we were talking earlier about why we do what we do, Josh. And, uh, you know, when I think of you, I mean, you go out and help people every day. You Try know, to. You, yeah. um, you might make a few dollars doing it, 
but look at what you do for people. Yeah. It, it, yeah. We all deserve to make a living doing it, but at the end of the day, I mean, I know you guys out here watching you, um, the knowledge that they acquire just from some of the stuff and the research you do and how you show them. Yeah. Uh, and th that's what it means to us is helping people. Uh, when you go into business to make money, I think you're you're making a mistake. And um, I think everybody should do it to truly want to help people. And that's our desire here at Skywalker uh, is we want to help people. So you have a nonprofit for that helps like veterans and helps like needy folks that need a roof. Well, Skywalker has done free roofs uh, for several years now. We probably put on six to eight free roofs a year nice. uh, for veterans. Um, Purple Heart Homes is partnering with us and you, Owens Corning. And you they, know I'm a veteran, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> I ain't getting a free roof. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's too late. Um, so yeah, it's uh, we've done a lot of free roofs in the past, but recently we've just acquired our 501c3 through uh, a, a company that I just started uh, called a Thatcher's Legacy. Okay. Um, so we will be doing nothing but nonprofit stuff uh, for anybody who needs it as far as roofing, uh, home improvement, yeah. and doing things to help people. Uh, and that's that's our heart here, and that's what we really want to do. It's just impossible to help everybody through well, a company that has to make a living. Yeah, yeah. And so we decided to do this separately, and we're going to start uh, really going after it hard. Awesome. Yeah. Well, guys check out Luke's channel. I'll post a link here at the end of this video and a link right up here. You can check them out. You can see anything and everything to do with roofing and some hot rod stuff. You got some of that in there too? No, I don't. Maybe no. you can get some of that. So Luke's got some hot <laughs> rod stuff. We might be over there. He's got, uh, he's a C10 pickup truck guy. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it taught you a whole lot. I know it's a little bit on the long winded side, but we will want, again, I didn't have to do this. I paid Luke to put a roof on my house. I said, look, man, I really want to teach people about roofing. So now we know thank you i admire you for what you do i admire you for all your hard work and i admire the fact that when you're successful you're giving back to your community so that's thank awesome you, guys thanks a lot we're going to get you some footage of the new roof on the house there and don't worry i'll be building a, a house in the future a real house a big house <laughs> on the farm but for right now the farm is priority thanks guys we'll see you next time on the stony ridge you know about this Woo! Oh, woo, woo, come woo, on. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Struggle. <laughs> See y'all. Take care. Come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Woo! A little bit this way and a little bit forward. There we go. Perfect. Man, you might make me look tiny on there. <laughs> this, is what, this, is what, this is what we do to get me to normal people's size. <laughs> Yeah. You ain't gonna pull not, it. Not gonna happen. I guess we know who's got the strongest kung fu grip now. <laughs> it's the dawn, and a plea has been made. He will come face to face with a world in need of repair. It is his destiny. His destiny is to rise and.